Welcome to the House of Hoosier Podcast. I'm your host, AJ Guyton. We still rolling here, and I got a very, very special guest. You guys know him as you know the man in the middle from 1987 uh, championship team, uh, put in work in the middle and manning and taking care of the and anchoring our defense from 80 from 86 to 1988. We got Dean Garrett in the building. He's stepping into the house. How you doing, Dean? Man, I'm good, man. I appreciate you getting me on here. And hold on, first, before you even start talking and getting everything else done, first of all, I want to say happy early birthday to you. Oh, yes, so sir. I do know it, and I text you every year. Uh, you do. And I'll be texting you again on uh, Sunday, I believe. And yep. I just wanted to say that first, let everybody else get out there and say the happy birthday to you also. Absolutely, man. I thank you, man. Uh, I don't know. Did you look forward to your forty fifth birthday, man? I'm, 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 I'm Michael Jordan comeback right now. <laughs> man, I'm, man, I'm fifty six right now, so oh, I already don't remember. Yeah, but you know, I'm yeah. going. You know what? Anytime you get one, it's yeah. always a good one. That's what I agree with. That you double nickel, you all you you've been you've I'm been double, double nickel in the penny. I'm fifty six, <laughs> so yeah, man. Anytime you get one, it's always good to have one. No, nah, I, I thank you for remembering that. It's not not often, you know. Our, our we 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 connect, we talk, but not many player former players remember your birthday. So that, man, I, I always try to stay on top of everybody's birthday, man. That's so awesome. I know your birthday's coming up, and you'll get yep. a text from me. But I just wanted to say it. So everybody else can shout out to you also. Yeah, I'm overshadowed this year, Super Bowl Sunday. So I get to celebrate. I get to celebrate both both uh, events. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to this Sunday. That's all good. It's all good. Absolutely. But once again, we got legendary Dean Garrett in the building. And, and for those who don't know, we have a we have a plethora of of listeners on our on our podcast from young to old. So let's let's dive it back in the past a little bit to kind of give everybody a feel for who you really are and, and, and where you come from. So start to start off this podcast, would you tell everybody where you're from and what it was like growing up at, at, at during the time where you grew up, where you're from? Man, I am from uh, San Clemente, California, man. So basically everybody would know it as OC. Yeah, okay. Uh, Orange County, California. Orange County. Mm -hmm. It's the southern tip of Orange County. So that's where I am from, man, right there. And, uh, man, San Clemente is a beach town, man. I grew up seeing the ocean every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure for a lot of listeners, they probably be, like, loving that. But, you know, yeah. I, I saw it every day. So, you know, do I go to the beach now? Nah. No. I don't need to see it. Yeah. I don't need to be around it. But that's what I grew up around. Absolutely. With brothers and sisters, I mean, who who grew up in the in, in the Garrett household? Man, I got three sisters, man. Um, I'm probably the third of the four. So uh, and I only grew up with three of us. So my three sisters, I ain't had no brothers, man. So all mm -hmm. of my sports influences really came off of just me watching okay. TV. My my dad wasn't around, so I didn't have to worry about him telling me I had to like this team or like that team, like I do <laughs> my daughter today. But when I grew up, man, I was a diehard Dodger fan, and I still am to this day. Wow. I'm a diehard Dodger fan. Mm -hmm. So baseball was your first love coming up? No doubt, man. I, I, I grew up playing baseball. That's all I ever really did. Uh, when me and all my friends got together, that's what we did. We got out of the middle of the street. We went to the park. We played baseball. Right. And, very, and very, you know, every so often we played football, but it was just mostly baseball, man. I mean, that, that's funny because my, my first love was baseball as well, man. But I, I was in the Chicago Cub era, era with uh, Andre Dawson, Ryan Sandberg, Sean Dunstan. Like, I know I, it very well. I, yeah, but I yeah, swore I was them coming well. up. And I remember them times going out in the street, getting six guys, playing some baseball in the backyard, yeah. smashing the ball on people's houses, running yep, in the house. It. That's what <laughs> that we was, did. That's what we did. Good times, man. So I, I can definitely relate to that. And then it was football after that. And then it came, yep. then came basketball. Then it came basketball. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, so talk about your mom and, and your mom and your influence. She she obviously raised you guys. or uh, And talk about the influence she had on you. Uh, coming up, man. My mom was uh, mm -hmm. like any era, any other African American mom. She's pretty hard on me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, she was she was pretty tough on me, and she was always on me about school. 
She was always on me about doing things in the house, like cleaning up, making my room, making sure that uh, I didn't let my sisters do that because she would never let them do that. Mm -hmm. She always made me uh, be a man right. when, I was a, when I was a boy. And uh, it helped me out later on. And I, and I understand that now, you know, she always told me, don't ever, you know, depend on some woman to do anything because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to take care of yourself. Right. And so I think like anybody else that grew up in a single family home and the dad wasn't there, that was that was my house. And so my mom really was a, a big emphasis on that. Yeah. What, what part of her personality did you bring to athletics? Wow. Um, I want to say uh, calmness. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but then again, I don't think I got the calmness until later on. Right. Mm -hmm. I can watch videotape of us playing right now, and I'm always celebrating with my hands in the air, doing <laughs> some that yeah. I wish I never did to this day. Right. But, um, yeah, I think uh, now as I'm, as an adult, calm and just being patient, man, because um, as you get older, you realize that you got to be patient and calm a whole lot more now than you were 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely, especially raising kids, man. Yeah. yeah. Extremely patient. Uh, what, when did you, what exact moment did you fell in love with the game of basketball? Wow, man. You know, I don't really think I fell in love with the game of basketball until mm -hmm. I probably went to junior college. And so that would have been in 85. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I played for four hey. years in, in, in high school. I was just out there. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but right. um, it wasn't until, uh, my junior college coach, a guy named Brad Dugan, man, and took me and really took me under his wing. He saw something in me that I know I never saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really believed in me, and he instilled that into me all the time. He instilled it into me. He instilled it into my mom. Mm -hmm. And he kept telling me and my mom that, you know, this guy can be all right. Yeah. And so that's when I think I started really falling in love with the game. When, what made you go out there? Was it somebody introduced you to the game? Did you just play it recreation-wise with your friends? Like, what what made you get out there and start to take it serious? No, my mom, um, well, growing up in San Clemente, mm -hmm. my mom and my dad got divorced. So mm -hmm. my mom had to move to uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to stay in Orange County and go to junior college. I thought we were saddle Saddleback Junior College. And so when she had to leave, she pretty much told me, it's like, I don't know what you think you're going to do, but uh, you need to come along right. because we're going to take care of you out here. Mm -hmm. And so I basically had to go to San Francisco. And so when I went with my mom to San Francisco, I had no idea what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I had no idea about nothing. I was green as heck. And I went out there. And I just happened to fall in the lap of the best junior college in the state of California. Right. At what point, you know, you, uh, what was your high school experience like? Did you have, did you play ball in high school or it just, you got into it in junior college? No, I, I did. I played high, I, I played high school basketball in uh, mm -hmm. California and Southern California in San Clemente. Okay. Um, man, it was, you know, it, San Clemente, if you ever go down there, if you ever drive through, you're going to see the water. So the, basically the most important thing out there in that area is surfing, beach, uh -huh. laid back, people walking around with flip-flops all day yeah. long. And I just happened to grow up in that in that area. And uh, little by little, from my freshman to my senior year, I got better and better every year. Uh -huh. When did you realize that this might be something you can get a free education out of? What, 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 at what moment did you realize that? Uh, probably not until I got to junior college, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. When I was in uh, high school, I know Arizona, Lute Olson, they were trying to recruit me. Man, I was 6'10", 180 pounds when I was a senior in high school, man. I ain't never seen a weight room, never thought about a weight room. So basically, I never thought about pursuing any kind of basketball career probably until I really got into City College of San Francisco. Oh, okay. And, and and when you got 
start getting that recruiting process, start rolling in, man. Who do you remember that first time someone from Indiana called you? And what? And I know now I'm thinking, I'm like, you grew up on the West Coast, all water, all sun. And I know you wasn't thinking about coming to the Midwest at that point. But who was the first coach that reached out to you? And what did you I'll, think about Indiana at that point? I'll tell you, um, Joby Wright was yes, uh, sir. the first one. And Joby Wright contacted my junior college coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously my junior college coach didn't think they were for real. <laughs> so I know he was like, hey, if you guys are serious, you know, come see this kid. Right. And, and after that, he was like, all right, now where is Coach Knight? If you're serious, right. I'm, I want to see him come out here. Mm -hmm. And so Coach did. And really? uh, once Coach Coat came out, man, I was sold. Wow. So, I mean, I know at that time, and everybody kind of knows this, Coach wasn't really recruiting junior college kids at that time. You know, that was like a step out, a walk on the wild side, as they say, uh, for, for Coach Knight. But what I wonder, what did he see that was different in you? And what did you see as an opportunity at Indiana? Um, I would say when well, my first year in junior college, I, I played pretty well. I got mm, okay. I got a whole lot better. It's kind of like that kid that was six five that grew to be six eleven. Yeah. Um, what my potential grew that fast. Yeah. What junior college would you go to? I went to San Francisco City College. Okay, so, cool. Okay, I, mean, I hate to say the name. I mean, I, I mean, OJ went to that school as a <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> he ended up being a running back. Right. And the rest right. is history. Right. So I, I went to school there, man, and uh, I I had no idea what I was doing, man. I, I just listened to my junior college coach, and I had a pretty good year. And then yeah. the next year, I was um, – the junior college player of the year in the state of California. Cause we have our own little system. Cause we have so many schools there. So it's just California has their own junior college and then the rest of the nation has theirs. Mm -hmm. And so I was player of the year in junior college in California and Joby saw that and Joby came out and my coach at that time, Brad Dugan and coach Knight. I mean, honestly, they were mirror images on right. vocabulary, uh, coaching. So me going to Coach Knight from Brad, really, it just was it was regular for me. I didn't have a problem with it at all. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask, because I tell people all the time, I said the, um, the, 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 the reason, probably the biggest reason I ended up at Indiana was because my, quote, unquote, ignorance of Indiana. I really didn't know what it was really all about. I, I, I grew up in Peoria, Illinois. All I knew was Bradley University, Illinois, um, University of Illinois, right. Illinois State. That's all we saw. So in Indiana, Chris Reynolds went to Indiana, but I yep. still didn't still didn't equate to me like, okay, go look at Indiana. So it was my ignorance that's like, you know what? Uh, I, if they like me, I'm going there. You know what I mean? Well, so <laughs> was it the same I, for I, you? I already kind of knew what I was getting myself okay. into. Right. And you know, my dad was in the military. Okay. And no, my dad was nothing like that. Right. But, but my dad being in the military, I, I already kind of had an idea what I was getting into. And I remember watching NCAA games with my dad, and I knew who Indiana was, and huh. I knew, you know, who all those guys, who Steve was at that time. Yeah. I knew who Rick was. I knew who Darrell was. Yeah, I, I was already sold as soon as Coach Knight came to my house. I was wow. like, Ready to leave if I could have at that moment, I would have gone. That's awesome, man. I, I would never so that's surprising because what was it like when you when you arrived in Indiana and you had that first winter then? <laughs> um, you know, that's my first time I ever saw snow. Really? Um, I remember seeing snow for the first time on December 31st, 1986. That's mm -hmm. the first time it snowed. We stayed uh, at the union because the dorms were closed, because I stayed in the dorm. So yep. we had to stay. At, we had to stay at the Union. Yep. You know that. That's where we used to go eat all the time. And Absolutely. so that's where we stayed. And I remember looking outside the window. I saw it snowing, and I walked outside. And I went outside so I could touch it for the first time. It was my first time ever seeing it fall. Out, out, out of the sky. Was you ready? Was you? Was you? Was you amazed? He's like, man. I, hey, I don't know if I could do this for three straight months. 
No, I never had a problem with it at all, man. I was oh, kind of okay. ready to get away. I was. Yeah. I, I had no problem with getting away and and trying something new. That's never been me, and still isn't to me. So yeah. I was happy to to go try something different, man. I all I knew was I was going to be on TV all the time because I remember seeing Indiana play on TV. So yeah, I knew my mom and my dad living in Texas. I knew that they'd be able to see me play on TV, and that's all I really thought. Right. I just remember when I committed to Indiana, it was a, it was a random guy so in the store. It was like, man, I heard you you going to Indiana. I was like, yeah. He was like, he just looked at me like, you sure? And I was like, uh, yeah. Why Why you say that? He was like, man, I heard some stuff about that coach. I was like, well, you know, I can handle my high school coach. I can handle anybody. But i never forget that puzzled look on his face like, man, do, do you know what you're doing? And I was right. you know, I said, but I had Chris Reynolds. Chris Chris Reynolds, you know, put me on to everything and you know how he operated. But can't be afraid of challenges, man. You got to get out there and try something different. So that's, that's it, man. You got to. Absolutely. Before we get into your Indiana experience, man, I got a segment that I do on the show called Who's Your 10? So I'm going to ask you 10 questions about Indiana basketball, Indiana college life that only you can answer. So my first okay. question, my first question will be what dorm or apartment complex did you stay on in on campus during your time? Oh, man, we stayed at uh, Ashton Johnston. Ashton Johnson. OK. Ashton Johnson, oh, yeah. Cool. I was a Briscoe kid. Briscoe, yes. I, I know Briscoe very well. Yeah, we were at Master <laughs> Johnson. I'm sure you was over there kicking it, man. Oh, um, man, my daughter's mom lived at uh, Briscoe, so I definitely know Briscoe. Oh, real, really? Word. Okay. Yeah. I was that, no no air conditioning ninth floor for me. I was, I was, <laughs> that's what I remember very well. Uh, who's your college roommate? Well, I didn't have a roommate. We had the phone between the wall. Oh, so we had a phone between the wall, but mm-hmm. we had your own room. And so Daryl Thomas, man, my uh, rest in peace, my buddy Daryl mm-hmm. Thomas was on the other side of me. And I'm pretty sure that was done by design by Coach Knight because Absolutely. he wanted Daryl and I to be as close as possible. Mm-hmm. So Daryl could uh, teach me everything that I did not know about uh, Big Ten basketball. Absolutely. Rest in peace, DT, man. Uh, got a chance to meet DT like a year before he passed, a year to the day. That he passed. So rest in peace. Uh, your favorite Absolutely. food spot in Bloomington during your time as a player? Uh, Buffalo Louis. Buffalo Louis. Oh, okay. Buffalo Louis. Yeah, man. Buffalo Louis back in '86, '87. Yeah, they yeah. Buffalo Louis was there, man. They, yeah, Buffalo Louis. No, no doubt, man. As a teenager, as a twenty-year-old, man, if we had a chance to get some room wings, that was it. Buffalo Louis. Uh-huh. No doubt. Second of all, by somebody say Big Wheel, because we always had to eat there. Yeah. I'm not even sure the Big Wheel is even still up, but I know no. Buffalo is just still there. Absolutely. Let me ask you, what road arena did you love getting playing in and getting a W? Ooh, road arena. Okay, so I never beat Purdue at Purdue. Okay. So I would love to say that. <laughs> right. We never won there. I never beat Iowa at Iowa. Oh, yeah, that's a, that was a tough place to play. That was a tough place for us, yeah. too. Absolutely. Um, we we won everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Man, on the road, I probably had to say Michigan. Michigan, yeah, that is always. Had such a, you know, that was such a hard-fought game in 87 when we played them and Steve hit a shot yeah, at, at the buzzer. So, yeah. Michigan. But, yeah, I never wanted Purdue, never wanted uh, – Iowa. So those are the two places that I always wish that I always got to win at, but I never did. There's a place that I love to play at. That was one of the only two places we didn't win at when I played was at Minnesota. I don't know what it was. Like I, I played great games, but yeah. then it was like always a cloud to come over in the last two minutes of the game. And really? you know, I just love playing on that stage and just being, I, I know what, did they have the raised court when you played? Absolutely. It ain't changed. Yeah. yeah. The raised yeah. court. Yeah, uh, it's cold. Uh, yep. There's no hot water. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no ain't nothing changed there. But wow. you know, I, shoot, we went we went four and zero against Minnesota. My Good time job. there for two years, so yeah. I never looked at that as a as a hard spot. Yeah, it was tough for us because they went to the Final Four my freshman year. That's yeah. right. With Bobby Jackson, them was there. Yep, yes, they yes, yes. Did. so they was kind of like. That was the peak of Minnesota basketball. And they, they, uh, no. you know, so I, and I always like Clem Haskins as a coach. So, um, 
best what would you what would you say your best college performance was? What game did you just have your best basketball game? Wow. Um I mean, I, I guess my most important, mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I thought about that a lot. And you know, I I think I hit probably about four buzzer beater shots when I was at IU. So you was I clutch. Did. We gotta start and mentioning so your name in the clutch. <laughs> I, I would say my favorite, most important man when we played Purdue mm -hmm. in '88, and uh, it, it I tell you, it was reminiscent of the game that I just saw the other day uh -huh. when we beat Purdue, and you know yeah. how Purdue comes in there ranked number one, yeah, and they jumped out to a big lead, and then Purdue fought back, but then we held off to win it. Mm -hmm. I tell you, um, same thing in '80 80, in '88. We played Purdue. They were ranked number two in one poll, number one in another poll. Same record. They only lost one game at that time, just like right. these guys did. Wow. And <laughs> we jumped out to a big lead. We got the lead. And uh, they came back. And I hit a shot at the – not the buzzer, probably with three, four seconds left. left we yeah. were down by one. I hit a shot with three, four seconds left to end up winning the game. Wow. wow. The best thing about that is, I'll tell you this, is that I'm really good friends with Todd Mitchell. Yeah. Okay. And so Todd Mitchell called me the day of that game and said, What, what we betting? <laughs> what we got yep. on this game? Yep. What we got, yeah. And, you know, I was like, You know, our regular, the next time I see you, you buy the shot or I'm buying the shot. <laughs> and, uh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he was all confident about Purdue coming into Bloomington. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, he knew. He knew that, you know, man, it's a tough place to play. So Absolutely. after that game, I texted him and I was like, hey, that was just like our game in exactly. 88. Awesome. And he said, uh, yeah, you're right. And bleep, bleep, bleep that place. Yeah. So <laughs> I won't believe it more. <laughs> it, made me, it made me feel even better. I was like, thank you for saying that. Yeah, People don't understand. You throw the records out in that game. It don't even matter. No, um, it don't make a difference. Yep. Who when uh thinking back, the, uh, who was your who you felt like when you went and played against them that you had to get a good night rest before? Who was your toughest individual battle? Man, my toughest individual battle at that time in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Where well, you knew that you was going in there and you was gonna wrestle for the for the for, for 40 minutes and, and you needed to be on your A game. You know what, AJ? You asked me that question. You're the first one ever asked me that question. I never thought about that. I, um, <laughs> man, I'm thinking about in the big. We're talking about in the Big Ten, right? The big Ten, yeah. Yep. 87, 88, 86, 87, 88. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> so, I didn't so, think. So I didn't did. think. I, I I didn't think there was anybody at that time better than me. In the Big Ten, maybe right. at Low House, but no, I I say, I'm not saying better than you. I'm saying that that I didn't think I had to get no sleepover. That I didn't think I was even worried about it at okay, that time. Okay. You think about guards? Yeah, I, was little guard. I was even worried about no, no big man that I had to guard. Because, Bird, okay, I mean, you go down the list. You go down to Michigan, Low Bob, Purdue. You have Mel McCants. Okay. Iowa had Ed Horton. Okay. Well, Northwestern had Sean. Yeah. I didn't think, no, I didn't think I was worried about any of them. I was more or less worried about the guards that we had to play against. Nah, yeah. I, honestly, I never thought about that question, but mm -hmm. I never thought any of those Big Ten centers at that time that I had to really, really worry about. I'm not trying to be funny or no, no, or anything like that, but no, I never thought about that. Wow, wow. So Michigan to have any? Michigan State? No. Michigan had Lloyd, Lloyd Bott. Lloyd, oh, Lloyd. These are NBA players you named. Yeah, it. but at that time, I, I – no, I, I would always thought I was better than those guys. For sure, for sure. Michigan State, I don't remember who their big guy was. Like I said, Iowa had Ed Horton. Yeah. No, I don't remember none of – no. I don't think I was ever really worried – about mm -hmm. that. Brandon Lowhouse, I think, might have been first team all Big Ten when I was yeah. a junior. Right. And I was first team all Big Ten when I was a senior. Right. I don't, yeah. Nah, I don't remember. Nah, I'm not trying to be funny, but I don't it was always pretty much guards or forwards that we were had to worry about. 
Yeah, you're making me think back because I'm like, who did Illinois have? No one? Ohio State, no one? Uh, Lord, Lord Hamilton. Yeah, Lord Hamilton. Okay. Yeah, Lord Hamilton. Yeah. Oh, but see, tough. we were more worried about Kenny Battle. Right, we yeah. We about Ken, Kendall Gill. You were more worried about Dick Anderson. You're right, yeah. At that time, so, no, I don't remember being worried about no center at that time. So the Big Ten was wing and guard heavy at that time. Man, Big Ten was just heavy, heavy all the way around <laughs> at that time, man. Right. No that was, I mean, that was the best conference in the in the yeah. nation, no yeah. doubt. All the superstars in college basketball besides Danny Manning, David Robinson. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're pretty sure everybody – and Per ourselves and everybody else played in the Big Ten. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who was your who who was your favorite teammate? Wow, I mean, I guess, I mean, just because we came in together and we were always linked at the same time, our names will always be linked together. It's, it's yes. Keith. Keith Smart. No, no doubt. No doubt, you know, but both of us coming in together and both of us coming in as uh junior college players. Uh -huh. Yep. And, you know, for the first time, and I guess you could say coaches experiment with junior college players and mm -hmm. things like that. But yeah. Keith would definitely be right there. But, you know, big train, big Daryl, Daryl Thomas. Daryl taught me so much, man. He taught me, you know, how to be a Big Ten player and to prepare for that. You know, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what coach had him and made him do. Absolutely. Was making sure, you know, you get – Get him right. Yeah, I had Keith on the show. I had to send you that interview at the end, man. It was so much fun talking to Keith. And uh, this, this was before he had even got the job. At Who Harvard. was his player? Yeah. Huh? Who was his best teammate? I have to remember. Uh, oh, his best teammate? I mean, he might have said you. I have to go back and listen. And, and the player. He's, he had a he had a guard that has given him the flux, like, you know, and, and she struggled with. So I'm going to send oh, you a he probably had Gary Grant that was giving him the flux. It probably was Gary Grant. That's yeah, exactly who it was. Grant, yeah. It was exactly who it was. Yeah, he gave was all of them the flux. Yep. Yeah, he gave all of them the flux. And gave everybody. You know, Gary Grant was a bad man, but uh, yeah. no, he showed love to you. He, it was a great interview. It was before he it was like before he got the job at Arkansas. He was still just chilling and follow, following his son around. So shout okay. out to Smart. Hope he'd be a head coach real soon and do his thing Absolutely. at the college level. But um, any impactful – teacher, confidant, or mentor outside of the program that, that helped you through your experience at Indiana? Man, um, outside the program, mm -hmm. you know, I always, always listen to anything Landon Turner had to tell me. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love seeing it. Landon come to the games was always a big thing to me. Yeah. But I knew he played pretty much my position between him and Ray. Yeah, him and Ray Tolbert. So yeah. anytime I had a chance to see those guys and to listen to anything they had to say was always, 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 always great to see. Absolutely. Um, but outside Indiana program, man, you know, at that time, man, coach got us pretty much locked in. Yeah. I don't really think anybody could have snuck in and told me too much. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> You really didn't have a chance, you know. We didn't have no phones and yeah. all that kind. Of, you know, I had my 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 phone on the ceiling in the wall between me and Daryl. So that was right. about it. So it wasn't like the access you can get to guys right now. We didn't have that kind of access. I agree with that. I tell people that all the time. I remember there was, you know, I didn't know at the time, but there was an opportunity for me to go pro after my sophomore year. But I never knew anything. Like I didn't know. You don't know where you rank. You don't know that they interested. It was like right. It was like we was living in a bubble. Like and but then when I graduated, when I got older, I look back. I'm like, you know, you look. You might get up. Somebody sends you an article or something. You're like, man, I was the number two prospect. I could have left. But yeah, Coach Knight did a great job of just keeping everything outside the program. I, I know, I know that'd be difficult to, in today's time. Oh, you couldn't you know, do it today. Yeah, you no, couldn't do it Social today. media and too many people yeah. in that ear. No, you yeah, don't have to worry about it. That's funny you said that because, you know, you you just, it's just baskets, books and basketballs for real. That's it. At, at Indiana University, man, which was crazy. Um, what was your, if you have the, besides the national championship, what's your most memorable coach night moment? Wow, my most memorable 
Coast Nine moment when I was playing there. Yeah, mm -hmm. your time at Indiana. I don't have to be on the floor. It could be off the court, whatever. Well, I, I won't lie. My most memorable seeing him come back like we did three years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Um, that that meant the world to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember that all the time. I still will sit there and watch that that yeah. video, man, and I still almost get start tearing up. Like, I mean, I tore, I teared up that day. Yeah, for sure. There can almost tear up now watching that man. That just that was just all about us, you know. It had nothing to do with nobody else. It had nothing to do with anybody who didn't go to school there. You know, I saw a lot of flack after that, and like people, why are we celebrating this? Yeah, we, now, this wasn't for you. This yeah, was yeah, for it was. Us. it's for us. Yeah, it was for us, you know, and and, and it's not for everybody. It was mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that was a great moment in time, man. Long overdue. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. it happened, man. So, and finally, from the Hoosier team, man, what do you miss most about, you know, Indiana University in, in, in your college days when you think backward? No doubt, man. It's always going to be your teammates. It's always yeah, going to be sure, your family. Yeah. Yeah. It's always going to be your teammates. It's always going to be your family, man. Yeah. And uh, we we still stay together. We still speak. You know, we try to stay as close as possible. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little easier now because, like I say, you got phones. Um, I got Steve and I got Keith both coaching. Yep. So I got a chance to see Steve about two weeks, less than two weeks ago when Nevada played UNLV here yep. in Las Vegas. I went over there and saw him. And hmm. Keith just sent a picture two days ago of him and Joe Hillman together yep. in Georgia. Kentucky. So, man, it's, it's, your, it's your teammates. It's your brothers, man. And that's – that's what sports is always going to be about. It's always about those relationships that you uh, have and that you're able to keep. Yeah. And that, that, that concludes that segment, man. Thank you for participating in the Who's Your Team, man. And for those of you who don't know, you join us. I'm talking to Dean Garrett, legend, first team all Big Ten performer from Indiana University. Um, talk about uh, your, your first season at walking in. You come from California, come into the Midwest, you walk in the gym in your first practice. Coach Knight is doing his thing, man. And what – talk about playing for him and how did you – what was the recipe for you to figure out how to be productive under Coach Knight? Because Coach Knight can – he can test you. He always going to test you. He always going to try to figure out, you know, what he can say to motivate you, what he can say to break you, and what he can say to keep you steady. And how did you handle it? And, and 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 did you feel it or did you just or did you just automatically know because you experienced that before? Well, I tell you, mm -hmm. um, my junior year, I mean, I got a pass. I mean, I got <laughs> B, I got, I got Daryl, and I got Todd Meyer there. So yeah. those three, they got it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I didn't play well, Steve was gonna hear this. Right. Yeah. Me, <laughs> as you already know, Steve was a captain. Yeah, he so uh, was. I, so my senior year, I think I got it a whole lot more because right. it was my job. And, you know, green, you know, I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> it, was, it was our job to do it. But I already knew, you know, what the things he would say, the things he was going to do, hmm. you know, thrown out of practice, all yeah. those things. I mean, we've all been there. You yep. know, you get tossed out. And it's, now it's my turn to be talking to Spine and Keith and Steve Bow's turn to be talking to everybody and talking about, Hey, you know, don't leave. We both stay here. Let's get ready. Don't leave. We, we're, we're going back out there. Exactly. We know we're, out. we're going back out. So it was our job to keep everybody else motivated and to go. So, like I said, man, junior year, I got a break, man. I didn't. I didn't really hear too much. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. What? What? Um, did you did you have that moment where you was like you call home like mom? I don't know what I done got myself into. I'm ready to get out of here. It seemed like I talked to Isaiah. I talked to Quinn. I talked to Steve, Keith. Everybody had that moment when it was like, no, I'm out of here. Did you ever have that moment? Never. Never, never. really? <laughs> no, I never had it, man. I was good. Yeah. I loved it. I loved every moment of being in Bloomington, man. Matter of fact, if they had NIL when we were there, I'd probably still be there. You'd probably I'd still be there. Anywhere. And you all oh, have man, Bloomington. I, man, we'd have loved staying in Bloomington, man. Right. That was we we laughed about it and talked about that then, man. It's like, man, if this was a job, yeah. I'd be right here. 
Cause that's just how we felt about the place. I never wanted to uh to get out of there. So I never had that moment know where I was like, hey mom, I'm getting the heck out of here. I'm coming home. No, not at all, man. I was totally comfortable. I was totally fine with everything that was going on. Wow. That first time I heard that, I mean, every I know I was like, yo. This is crazy. What's going on? But then you Look, just kind of, you understand the passion. You, understand. you know what? But check it out. Yep. What you just said. All those names you just said? Yep. All of y'all guards. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. All of y'all guards. That's true, yeah. So that's you look at y'all as guards in another, in another way. Like, y'all right. supposed to be the leader leader. Yeah. Like the world yeah. leader, all of these things. I yeah. was a so coach didn't really, you know, he didn't jump on me about that because the ball's not in my hands. Right, you ain't making so decisions. What you going to tell me? It's like, Dean, you didn't do this. You're, I don't have the ball. I only get the <laughs> right. ball if you guys give it to me. Right. Hey, that's a great point, man. Excellent point. Show yep. was, all of them said it to a man. Let's talk about, I know you talk about it a lot, but let's talk about uh, the 1987 championship season, man. At the beginning of the year, did you feel like this team is going to win a national championship? I had no idea. No idea, right? Um, <laughs> green as heck. I ain't going to lie. Coming right. from San Francisco, I was just happy to be there. Happy, happy to be in Indiana. I was happy to be in Bloomington, man. Right. And so I do remember the little presses coming out talking about Indiana. I think we might have been ranked number one in one or two of those different polls. But I was like, how do they know that? Because Keith and I ain't never played. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see different things saying, you know, they got a, a junior college center coming. And I'd be like, these guys ain't never seen me play. I don't know what you can do. Well, how would they know any of these things? So, and then, you know, Indiana just lost to Sy in Syracuse to Cleveland State. So yeah. it's like, how would you guys know that we rank number one? But that's where they had us at. Right. So, no, I never thought much of it until we probably started playing later on in the year. But in the beginning, I thought it was all like, how do you know? Right. And, and that's what the, my next question was going to be. At what point in that season did you did you really look at it and was like, oh, we are number one and we do have a chance to be to cut down these nets. Let's go do it. Uh, Probably we play Louisville. Louisville. OK. Louisville, was that, Louisville, was that never Louisville. nervous? Was that never yeah. nervous? Oh, okay, man. <laughs> I I watched Louisville beat Duke in that championship game, man, and I knew I was already going to Indiana at that time. Mm -hmm. And so in San Francisco, everybody kept talking about you get to play against him next year. Exactly right. And I knew this in my head from the time they played them in December of '85. I'm already got this in my head all the way until December of '86. So I'm already thinking, like, man, I get to play against Purple Sellison, and that's yep. all I thought about for pretty much a year, man, is that I could not wait to play against Purple Ellison because I just saw him, what I just saw what he did on TV. Yeah. Well, how did the battle go? Man, I, I held my own. I played yep. well against uh, Louisville. Uh -huh. That's when I kind of figured out that I, I, I thought I belonged. I got this. In the beginning, we played against – Montana State. Yeah, Notre right. Dame, yeah. But Notre Dame didn't have no true center that mm -hmm. I thought. I was like, man, I, I think I showed something. You're right. And then by the time we played uh, Louisville, and I held my own against uh, Parvis Ellison, mm -hmm. then that's when I was kind of like, okay, okay. man, I, I didn't think I – I mean, I just got done playing junior college basketball. I didn't think that was all that great, you know? Right, yeah. I was, and I had a chance to play against him, and I was like, Man, I'm all right. I have my own. I think I probably had a double double, but I was good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Was there was there a um, was there a moment in the season where something happened that flipped the switch in you guys, or was your season just you were consistently good throughout the season? No, um, we lost to Vanderbilt first time we ever, ever I ever had a, the, the the crowd storm on us. We lost to those yeah. guys in Tennessee, mm -hmm. in Nashville. Um, we came back. We almost lost a few games during the <laughs> Christmas classics, right? And yeah. you know, in, in our head, you never wanted to be that first team that lost that game in the Christmas classic, right? In, yeah, for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. my goodness. And <laughs> I we barely beat UNC Wilmington by one, 
And we was like, oh, my that goodness. Was, we going to be the first team to lose this thing? Hey, that was like a loss anyway. I know that next practice was bananas. So. Oh, it was like a loss, <laughs> man. We had to hear it, man. That's when you started getting a little nervous when you started realizing that, man, yeah. you don't want to lose these games yeah. like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we got in the Big Ten season. The Big Ten season started off for us pretty well. We lost to Iowa at Iowa the first time. A coach 19 gave up over 100 points. Right. So, trust me, we definitely heard that. <laughs> but, you know, Iowa's ranked number one in the nation. You oh, know? No, they, had those those guys. They, they had a great team. Roy Marble. Oh, no, my God. Yeah. Brad Lowhouse, Ed Horton. And so many BJ Arm. Who am I thinking? BJ, BJ Armstrong. Armstrong. I should have said his name first. Yeah. So man, you know, we lost to those guys, but you know, when you thought you were gonna hear it, coach came in there and is like, hey, let's get ready for the next game. Yeah, that's good stuff. So that was a that was a surprise for us, but I don't probably the Iowa game, the huh. Vanderbilt game, and that definitely that UNC Wilmington. I don't think they even know what they did to us. They definitely right. Question for us, you know, yeah. and I'm pretty sure for them that was probably a moral victory, mm -hmm. but for us it was a mental, mental victory. It was a wake up, definitely. And then yep. you, you cruised through the A7 tournament, and you got that epic battle with Syracuse, man. What do you remember about that game? Well, I, I wouldn't say we cruised. Um, well, yeah, obviously, yeah, y'all know. Yeah, yeah, man, we we almost lost to uh, LSU. Right. Oh, we sure. I definitely did. thought we were going to lose to LSU. Yeah, yeah. Um. UNLV, I didn't think we were going to lose. I mean, I just know what we were mentally. We were just so fired up. And I know I was definitely fired up being a West Coast team and me All coming right. from the West Coast. So I was definitely fired up to play against those guys. Was that Armand um, Gilliam? Um, Armand Gilliam, yeah. Armand Gilliam, Fetty Branks. Uh, yep. Nice. Gerald Patio, Jarvis Bass Knight. Those, yeah. guys, those guys were – they were the truth. I mean, and – me living here in Las Vegas, I always have to hear them talking <laughs> right. about the 90 team. Rebels, yeah, yeah. The know. 90 Rebels. And yeah. I'm like, now the 87 Rebels is really, really good. They just, yeah. you know, we just happen to beat them. Yeah. But they be talking about that all the time. Absolutely. But when we beat uh, Syracuse, man, what do I remember, man? I can remember seeing Syracuse in the middle of the shoot around, you know, for the final four, you get there, you got your shoot around, the other teams come out to do their shoot around. And I remember, we all remember walking past Syracuse and you know how it is when you first see somebody, you're like, man, those guys are big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we thought like, yeah. man, you know, we just got through a whole big 10 season where there's a whole bunch of big dudes. <laughs> we come through and we just see these guys and we like, man, those dudes are big. Yeah. All them dudes, and Cycling was huge. Derek yeah. Coleman was huge to yeah. us at that time. We were all looking at each other like, man, yeah. you know, that's the first thing we thought. Uh -huh. Three for three, three drafts, Sherman Douglas, D uh, D Derek Coleman, Ronnie Cycli. These are first round, you know, high draft picks, man. Oh, yeah, no doubt. How were you able, how were you guys able to neutralize them like that? Because, you know, and I think, Kyle, of course, everybody knows that's why we think Bob Knight is the greatest coach ever. He gets the most out of the least and he can he can create a game plan to stifle anybody if you give him two three days it's a wrap right. you, you know what i'm saying so but how did you guys stifle such talent you know what i wouldn't say stifle yeah i know you I'm, not, I'm not gonna say that for that for what that particular mean? game i wouldn't say that right um you know what man i tell a lot of people this they were probably not probably they were way more athletic than us for sure Mm -hmm. uh, way more talented <laughs> talented than us mm -hmm. but they weren't smarter than us right exactly and that all came from Coach Knight yep. and I just happened to see something not too long ago and I saw Jim Beheim talking about that particular game mm -hmm. and he's like oh we outplayed Indiana you know we were 11 point underdogs and it's like no you were not you were 4 point <laughs> underdogs in right. that First of all, yep. second of all, you probably outplayed us, but you didn't outsmart us. Right. You might have, should have won, but you didn't win because we were just smarter. Not right. saying anything bad about those guys. Right. We were just smarter. Because if anybody looks at it, we only had four guys score in that game. 
Four I'm not sure if anybody knows that. Nobody know that. Who are four guys scored? Keith, Steve, Daryl, myself. Rick didn't score a single point. That is so crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't even our best game. Right. Exactly. Probably in the whole NCAA tournament, it was our worst game. Dang. And it was probably Syracuse's best game. Mm -hmm. No doubt. I mean, they had a little, they had a, they had a easier game than we did. We had to play UNLV. Mm -hmm. They had to play Providence at that time. They right. beat Providence in, by double digits. Right. We had a shootout fight with UNLV, who was ranked number one, only lost one game all year. Yeah. They might not even have beat UNLV. Easy. But right. UNLV was more talented than they were. Yeah. But we just were smarter in we were this. We were a team. Right. There was no, there were no egos on that team whatsoever. And you would think that Steve Alford had not had an ego. Mm -hmm. Steve didn't have no ego. Steve right. would have came out of that game scoring three and would have celebrated just like he did. Exactly. So yeah, that's how we won that game. So mm -hmm. I hope Jim Beheim one day watches this and he can be or he hears this. Yes. But no, you you might have. Outplayed us, but that was our worst game in the six-game tournament that we had. And that might have been your best game in that six-game tournament. Wow. You heard it here, man. I, I ain't know only four people played. That was that's four, four, four guys, guys scored. Yeah, that's I think only six of us played, but yeah. only four of us scored. Rick didn't score, Joe didn't score, Steve Al, Steve Al did not score. Wow. I'm, unbelievable. So I mean, obviously the game that came down to the last shot, Keith knocks down the shot. But I want you to take us through where you were from your angle when when that when you guys walked out, what you were thinking, and what you saw from your perspective on the last shot by Keith. Well, I know I know uh, Derek Coleman is the free throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, called a timeout. Um, Coach already told us he's going to miss his free throw. <laughs> <laughs> so. Coach at this time to me is God. Yeah, for sure. Like he's telling us things that are happening. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sitting there like, he said this this kid's about to move, miss it, and he just did. Yeah, so right. we, you know, we get the ball, we call timeout. Coach comes down, and he just says, you know, I know everybody thinks he's calling up a play for Steve, but he didn't. He just like the first open shot, you know. And I'm just glad I didn't get the ball like Daryl did. I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have hey, tried to it up. It, you know, but for Daryl to do that and throw it back out, I, right. trust me, I thought about that a lot. Right. After that game, and I was like, man, what would I have done? Right. Dumped it. You know, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say 60 40, I would have probably shot it. Of course. Hey, you would have gone. Hey, this is the moment. <laughs> yeah, I would have did my turnaround shot. I was getting my shot off on Ronnie anyway. He wasn't blocking my shot. Right. So it wasn't like I was worried about that. So it was kind of like 60-40, I might have shot it. But, yeah, I mean, it all worked out, you know, to perfection in Indiana history. But I'm just glad I wasn't a part of that part. <laughs> the other side, right. Yeah, you know, no doubt. It's funny that you said it because Isaiah and Keith both mentioned that when I talked to them was like, Everybody would think that when we, when Coach Knight called timeouts, he was just drawing up the most intricate, awesome play. But when you would come to the huddle, he would just say, "Let's let's let's get some movement, let's get some screens, and let's get yep. the best shot we can get." And make you sure like, make a good screen. Yeah, make so a who, good screen. who's supposed to shoot it? Like, it's like you hey, think who, you draw it up and you get it. Make a good screen. That's what he always say. Make it's a good always saying, man. That's funny that you said because they both said the exact same thing, man. But uh, my that was an awesome story, man. We all know the history to that, man. It's great to hear uh, from your perspective, man. And I appreciate you taking time to share that part of the story. I know you get interviewed every year. And and matter of fact, Indiana is balling with y'all retro uniforms on. I know oh, I know man. I you know, hey, trust me. We woke <laughs> up that morning and the text already started. They were yeah. in the 87 uniforms on Ooh. Saturday. So I love we already that. knew. And, you know, we happened to go, what was it, 13? I don't even – we we went undefeated mm -hmm. in Assembly Hall with that uniform on. 
The uniform, wow. And then we had a chance to wear it for all six games of the tournament. Okay. That white uniform. So we didn't you we didn't lose a game in '87 in, in that white uniform. White uniform, and they ain't lost one yet either. So no, no, I that's saw awesome. that, and trust me, I, I texted out to Scott Dolson. And I was like, you know what? You keep making sure we wear those '87 yeah. uniforms anytime that we need a big win, <laughs> and, and we did. Absolutely, man. Well, you win this national championship, man. Celebrate that. You get drafted in the second round, but you got a very unique path to the NBA, man. Tell everybody like what happened you uh, after you got drafted from that point forward, and how did it circle back to getting in the NBA years later? Man, um, I got drafted by the Phoenix Suns. Right, went out to Phoenix. Man, I'm telling you, I, when I say I'm green, I was green as hell. Mm. I wish I had somebody who you know came around and was like, man, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. You know, we, we didn't have that at that time. Yeah. Right. So I got out to Arizona, man, and lived out there. And we had the Pete News Big Man's Camp. Uh -huh. And I went out to Stanford. That's where we had the Pete News Big Man Camp at. And uh, went through all the drills like you do every day. And on the last day, we're playing a pickup game. And uh, Charles Oakley threw me an alley -oop pass. Caught the first one, dunked it, went on back down the court. Next time around, went up again. Charles Oakley threw me out of the pass. I don't remember who the dude was. He came underneath me. Mm -hmm. I came down on my ankle. Not on my ankle, but on my foot. Right. And, and broke my fifth metal tarsal. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Wow. Well, I broke my fifth metal tarsal, had to have surgery in my foot, uh, put a screw in my foot. So I was out for the whole year. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought maybe you just decided to go overseas. No, no, I, I broke my foot. So I signed a two-year deal, so I was still there. I came back the next year. Man, I was out of shape. I wasn't ready to do anything. Okay. So at that time, they could have traded me or they, they just let me go to uh, Italy at that uh -huh. time to play to see if my foot was, you know, good because I didn't really play basketball in the whole year. So I went to Italy for the first time, went over there, and uh, started off real well mm -hmm. and kept playing really, really well. Came back home, uh, tried to get a job, and everybody was like, yeah, you can come and try out. All right. Mm -hmm. But Italy was offering me guaranteed money. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, well, we, we, they were guaranteeing it. So yeah. I was like, man, you know, 23, 24, I ain't had no chance to take no chances. So yeah. went on back to Italy and played again, came back, tried, tried it again for the NBA, went to everybody's summer league as I did all the time. And they'd always say, hey, come on to camp, but they wouldn't guarantee it. So yeah. now I went back to Italy, came back again, same thing, went back to Greece. And by this time I'm 28 and I was 29. And I was like, okay, I'm kind of tired of playing over here. <laughs> and, uh, right. Uh, where, where in Italy did you play? I played in three different cities. I played in a place called Four Lee, which yep. is about small, small city, about 30 minutes outside of a, a um, city called Bologna. Uh -huh. And then I, my next year, I played in Retro Calabria. So how it looks like a boot. Yeah, I played right there at the tip, right near Sicily. I used uh -huh. to wake up and you could see Sicily every single day. Yep. And then my uh, third year, I played in a city called Pesaro. And uh, for a better team, because all these teams now were trying to get a name for a better team, I played in Pesaro. And then my last year, I played in uh, Greece, but I played in a city called uh, Thessaloniki. So I okay. played in a called Pauk. And uh, man, by that time, I was pretty much over it. I was tired of uh, living overseas and doing all these things. Right. Hey, um, this is funny. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to show you this real quick. This is. Uh, this blow your mind. Can you see the name on there? I do. You in Bologna. Yeah. <laughs> so I played uh, four you years. Played in for I you played for four years. I played in uh, Skipper Fortitudo for three years. Mm -hmm. I went over to Virtus my fourth year. And with Blow Your Mind, I also played at, um, I mean, I played at Virtus my fourth year. Then I went to Reggio Calabria for, in 2006. And in, in played 2007, I, I played for, um, I can't remember the team, but I went to Greece. 
uh, I, but I only play. I stayed there for three months, and that was right after my eye surgeries. And they, same thing, I was trying to play my way back into shape. So I knew it was something that was that was connecting us. But yeah. we played in the same. I know Pesaro. I met my daughter's mom in Bologna. Um, okay, she played in Faenza. You remember? Oh the, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was a there was a restaurant, the best restaurant I've ever been to, called Spaghetti Noti. I don't know if you ever been there. But it's 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 in Frenza? no probably not in Frenza, no. And it was in Fayenza, and I met my daughter's mom there, and my daughter, you know, obviously my daughter was uh, her mother played in uh, Fayenza, so my daughter's here because of my my travels to Italy. So I, no I, I took the same path you took, played against Pesaro, uh, yeah, you know, I played, and I know Forley uh, very mm-hmm. very well. They didn't have a, they had a first division team in Forley when I was there. But uh, but we we very familiar with Four Lee, so took the oh, same yeah, path you took, man. <laughs> yep, same path, man. You know the cities I'm talking about, man. And yeah, Cavallini is a is a huge name in uh, okay. basketball, international basketball, and Palk is a big name in international basketball. But Absolutely. yeah, man, some of my my best travels. Yeah, no, no, Bologna was. I was trying to get back. I haven't been there since I left, probably in 2009. So I want to bring my family back there because, you know, I actually fought it when I went there because I was coming from the NBA and I didn't, you know, you kind of feel like it's a downgrade and you feel, yep. you know what I mean? So I had that attitude for the first month and a half yeah, until I really just gave it to God and was like, you know what, let me make the best of this. I'm hoping for money and, you know, I'm a professional and I'm in Italy, one of the, one of the most historical countries, you know, that, in our world. And once I... I gave it up and just got into the culture, man. It changed my life. And, man, uh, I'm telling you, man, um, especially in the 80s, man. Yeah. I went over there, 89, and like you said, we mentally you think it's a downgrade because you think you want to be at home yeah, in the NBA. Yeah. And literally, did you know, you're playing in probably the second best league there was in the world, especially for me at that time. I mean, I can name off so many – veterans that I had a chance. I mean, Michael Ray Richardson, yep. Clement Johnson, Daryl Dawkins, yep. Brian Shaw, Danny Ferry, all mm-hmm. of us were over there at this certain time. Mm-hmm. Man, it was great basketball. It was come see basketball. Dino Raja. Yeah. Cool coach. I was playing against all these guys when Sabonis when oh, we were all right. overseas before they even came over. Mm-hmm. So, hey, man, that was some of the best basketball, and I'm so glad I had a chance to do it, honestly. Yeah, no doubt. Changed my life, man, of being able to. Oh, be man. I still got good friends over there, man. I, I've been back earlier than you. I went back in 2016. We had a reunion. So I had a, re- had a chance to go back to Reggie Claudia, man. And it was, it, was one, it was one of the best experiences to go back and, and see everybody. Do you remember playing against a guy named Zorn Savage? Absolutely. That was he was the general manager when uh, when I came. He he's the one who brought me over. In Bologna, yeah. <laughs> he sure was. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, man. man. Hey man, uh, I love talking European basketball. And same for me, man. I, I, Tyus Edney was over there, Trajan Langdon, uh Anthony Parker. Um yep. it was, I mean, I had Carlos Delfino, Marco Bellinelli. Um, like these are my teammates. Like I didn't know at the time. Like these, they yeah, ended up being NBA, right. yeah, they ended up being NBA draft picks. Like, and they was 18, 19 and playing yep. against me in practice every day. So uh, but yep. we were loaded. One went to the Euroleague final and just in, 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 in Maccabi, Tel Aviv, which is another beautiful city. I don't know if did you guys play go to Israel no, and play the Euroleague? Been in Maccabi three times. We played in Tel Aviv twice, played in Jews ah. once. So yeah, yeah man. And I had a chance to play with uh, Sasha, who played with uh, the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, yeah. Who was with uh, Vladi. Yep, Sasha Davilovich. Yes, he was my uh, teammate. Oops. He was my teammate when I was out there, man. Wow, uh, see, that's cool. So, yeah, like you said, you don't even know who these guys are, and now you do. But, I yeah. know them now, for sure. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So, what did it feel? How did how vindicating was it? I think you came back. Then you win, uh, you know, most improved player, or rookie of the year. I'm sorry, rookie of the year, right? Like how vindicating? Oh, man, was that? you know what? I should have. I not rookie of the year. I should have been first team all rookie. 
Oh, okay, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I should have been first team all rookie, man. Uh-huh. And uh they gave it to a dude named Travis Knight. I remember that, yeah. Who played yeah. with the Lakers. The and Lakers. I'm like, hold on. You you weren't the reason why they made the playoffs and they, you had Shaq. Yeah. Yeah. I was a part of a, a starting five with myself, KG, Steph, yeah. Gugliotta, and Doug West. And you know, we made the first one for the Timberwolves ever in the playoffs. I'm sure did. And they gave him, you know, first team all and I didn't even make the rookie team at all. Wow. I made it that I was 30, you know, I was 30 years old when I came over, but I mean, uh, Sabonis made all rookie team. He was 30 something, 33 <laughs> when he came over. Wow. So how'd he make it? But t- Travis Knight made it. Oh, and man. I remember seeing that, man. And I was pretty upset about that when I did see that. We ain't seen him since. How, what, was no. it, what was it like playing with a young Kevin Garnett, man? Now, I know you had a hand in kind of mentoring him, teaching him how to work. What was it like playing? Because I he seemed like he's just a bundle. Of energy. I mean, I know KG personally, but I uh, never got to play with them. What was that like? Um, what you see is what you get. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Same thing that you see. Yeah. Hey, it's all the same thing we had to deal with in practice every single day, man. Yeah. You know, your team in practice, and he'd be in there pumping you up. And as soon as Flip turned the jerseys over and he's not on your team, he's sitting in there going at you. Going at you, right. Yep, that's him all day long, man. KG was a bundle of energy, man, but it was so nice. And learning and watching this young person become more of a grown up man. Right. He was already he was already already a grown up. Yeah. was years beyond his uh his age. But uh being able to be around him for five years and watching him grow, 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 and grow, it was a it was a pleasure. Awesome, man. I, I forgot about that, but I used to play with y'all on the video game. I don't know how I forgot about that, but I used to get busy with y'all. You and Tom Gugliotta was one of my favorite players for some unknown reason. I NBA couldn't. Games. Oh, NBA yep. games. Yeah, exactly, no. man. But that fireball come out <laughs> when you're on fire. <laughs> some Good unknown man. reason. I just gravitated to Tom Gugliotta. I don't know what that was about. But yep. uh, well, that's cool, man, to, to, to talk about that. Uh, we, we'll wrap it up here shortly, man. I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing uh, from our current Hoosiers. Now, I want to start with the the hiring of, of Mike Woodson. When they were talking about bringing in a player, and I text Scott Dawson, like, it has to be a former player. I said, you, you got a pick. You got plenty out here coaching. So what did you, when initially, which former player, not to say, you know, I would say you didn't want Coach Woods, I didn't care who it was, but which one did you have in mind initially? And when you found out it was Coach Woodson, did what, did you, what were your thoughts after that? Man, I'm telling you, I mean, the only person who probably had it so much tough was Scott. Right. Um, Scott's coming from uh, Steve Alford, Key uh-huh. Smart era. Yeah. Where he was our manager, so. Sure. I know that was tough on him. Yeah. Uh, I, I never reached out to Scott at that time. Um, I knew that was a tough job. I knew that was tough what he was going through. Um, I was like you. I was hoping it was an Indiana guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, I never talked to Steve about that during that time because I never asked him or did I want to know what his thoughts about that work. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to become biased on it. Um when he took Coach Woodson, obviously I reached out to Keith and I said, uh, I took Woody and he said, yep, I know. He already knew. He knew before I did. Right. So yeah. I, knew, I knew it was something that he wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I reached out to Scott and I just said, hey, man, I think you made the right choice. Absolutely. And he hit me. He, he texted me right back and said, thanks, Dino. Yep. And uh, obviously I believe he still has. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's uh, – I just wanted to be somebody that was in the family. I didn't. I didn't care about all these new dudes coming out. <laughs> right, young new dudes that have no idea. You know, I, it's that's a tough job. Absolutely. And I just think you got to have some kind of uh, Indiana background because there's a lot of us, yep. like myself and yourself, who are going to come back and we're going to be critical of what's going on because. I mean, once you played for coach, it better be a, a coach night dude. 
<laughs> exactly. Look at it. <laughs> better it be better a be somebody that that that's that's a coach dude. And that's how I looked at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, once, once it was Mike, I was uh, I was thrilled. I was happy to see it. Me too. Why do you think uh, Steve never had the opportunity to come home? I think it's just timing. Like why? Why? Because I always dreamed that Offer would be the coach at some point. I, 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 I'm honestly, I've never ever asked Steve this question. I never talked to him about it. What he wanted, what he want to do it. Right, man, that's got to be a hell of a pressure, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, for right. to be Steve, and and you're in the coaching already, and then you come back there. Yeah, man, that's man, that's a, that's some man. I mean, I already knew he was dealing with a lot of pressure being a head coach at UCLA. Yeah. Oh, you're going to be the head coach of Indiana? I mean, mm-hmm. it's a bigger thing just because you're from there. Right. Yeah, true. So I've never asked Steve. I'm not sure if Steve ever won a job. If you didn't want a job, I never right. talked to him about it. I just know that that's that'd be a lot of pressure, man. You got to come out swinging as soon as you get there. Right. I mean, there's a lot of pressure, but, you know, it, he handled it at UCLA. Um, you know, he's still working, still doing his thing. But yep. when I think Indiana basketball, I've always thought Steve Alford. I don't know yeah. why, but it's like when I the, when you think when I see that symbol, you know what I mean. I always think Steve Alford, and then everybody, then Calvert, then all these guys. So you, like, you're why? a shooter. You're yeah, a scorer. That, yeah, yeah, that you're too. Scorer. You he shoot with the hair and the and the and the and the and the, and the handsome face. And hey man, you, you, know what I'm you <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> y'all, y'all look at Steve. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, you look at Steve differently than I look at Steve because you guys, you guys were scores, man. You shot the three. Yeah, you exactly. Were the team. You were, you were a guard. So yeah. you guys, I, I mean, you can't, you can't even deny it. You look okay. at Steve. You're right. I mean, even when you were playing, you were like, okay, what can I do to, yeah. to get to that level? And I mean, you yeah. did everything you could, but yeah. win that chip. But yep. you were right there, man. Shorty, yep. right four, number no, five. Absolutely. No, I mean, that's, that's four that's, number five. I mean, I'm I'm pressing you up because I I know it's one of the two. You're number four, five, three, yeah. and scoring. Right, yeah, for sure. Four, four right, right now. Trace you were trying to get to. Yeah, yeah. Steve was the. Yeah. That's yeah, all you he, heard. That's all you heard about. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. He was that. He was that level, man. Indiana's a Indiana's a state of shooters, man. And you were you were blessed to be one of them, man. And so you. Yeah. Calbert, you guys, man, you guys set the mold for these young dudes right now. I appreciate that, man. Um, you've been keeping up with the, the team, right? So, what absolutely, you, man, it's I, fun I, to do. You excited about what you're seeing? The leadership of Trace Jackson Davis, the leadership of Mike Woodson. Keeping, I think it was very impressive how he kept the ship afloat during all those injuries and all those things that was happening. I think that's kind of being forgotten about. You know, it's like, I mean, you had X go down. You yep. had Galloway was always injured at a point. Race goes down. Trace back is hurting. You lose three straight. And now you 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 won six straight and you're second in the Big Ten right now, man. So what are, how, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I mean, I had a chance to, to see the team when they played in Las Vegas against Arizona. Oh, man, I was, yeah. Hell of yeah. a game. I went to the game. Even before that, man, I went to practice the day before. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know how that is, man. Anytime you get a chance to go back yep. to Bloomington or see the team, Bloomington, mm-hmm. Vegas, I was around, so mm-hmm. I felt like I was, I was, I was a part of the group, man, and part of the family, you know. And uh, I saw Tim Garl, and yep. I saw Mike Woodson, and you know they saw me, man, and they was like, man, you got to come and speak and say yep. something, to the dudes. So man, I had a chance to say something to the team, man, and. Um, Basically, they probably wouldn't even understand it until you're gone. Yeah, you won't. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the thing. You don't understand it until Me you're either. gone. Man. I didn't. I, it, but I would try and explain to them, man. It's like it was right after they lost to Rutgers. Yep. And then they were coming to play against Arizona yep. here in Bloomington, in, in Vegas. And I was trying to just say, listen, Rutgers, Rutgers is excited about this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they only yeah. excited about that. Yeah. You guys are just in the uniform. They yeah. excited about what we've already done. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, Calvert, Steve, what yeah. we've done. 
Arizona's going to be the same way. That was the first time Indiana, Indiana and Arizona ever played against each other ever. Right, yeah, true. They don't care about y'all. They care about this. Uh-huh. They played against Indiana, and you guys are holding that torch right now. And you guys won't understand nothing I'm talking about <laughs> until later on. Yeah. But you guys got to come to play every single night. You know, and they lost Arizona. Then they went to Kansas. They lost. And yep. so it was kind of like, man, I, me and my buddies, I got a few buddies that live out here. They went to Indiana. So we all get together. Every 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 Indiana game, we get together in my house. And we all watch the game. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, okay, let's go out to Bloomington. I was like, well, let's go to the Purdue game. Mm-hmm. But then they lost these games back to back to back. And I was like, I'm not going all the way out to Bloomington to watch this guy lose. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm not going. So I was like, counsel me out. I'm not going. Yep. Then they went on that run. Yep. And now they're playing real well. So maybe yeah. it's a good thing I stayed away. Because yeah, yeah. I was Did the right supposed thing. to be at that game on Saturday. But I was the one that called it off saying, I'm not going because I don't want to see these guys lose. But Mike Woodson is doing, man, he's doing an immaculate job, like you just said, with the injuries. Yeah, and getting these guys playing defense, something that NBA basketball does not do. Not do right. <laughs> so no. right. playing defense and guys playing hard. It's such a pleasure to watch Indiana basketball, man, and be a Hoosier. Even if yeah. you didn't play at Indiana, even if you cheer for them, if you don't cheer for them, you got to give them some love just because they play the game hard in the right way, man. And it's so nice seeing Assembly Hall like it was when we both played there. Absolutely rock. We had that dip where it was not like that at all, where nobody was showing up. and Nobody coming to the game. We won two games, three games. That was so hard to watch and and to walk around any city that you ever wanted to walk into. Uh-huh. But it's so nice to see Coach getting these guys playing. And Trace Jackson Davis, man. I mean, I can't say enough about that young man. Mm-hmm. So happy to see him come back. So happy to see him getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so happy to see people say bad things about him and him respond in a very positive way. Because I, right. I hear it. I mean, I know he hears it. We all hear it. He's right. not an NBA player. He's not ready for it. We've all seen that. Yeah, That kid comes back and he plays and he puts up numbers. And he's showing everybody, like, man, I could play this game, but maybe at this time he's not worried about it. It's just exactly. nice. He's worried right now. He's trying to put banner number six up there yeah. on that thing, man. And it's so nice to just see that kid in roof form. Absolutely, man. Hey, that was that's awesome to hear. What that finally, man. So you what is what is the day like for Dean Garrett now, man? You're tired, you're 56, you chilling in, in the heat in Las Vegas. What, what's, <laughs> what's the day like for you now? Man, well, it's not too heated up yet, man. I can't wait till I can go outside in my backyard and just kind of chill out. Matter of fact, you got to come on out here. Oh, I'll be so, definitely. Uh, you can do that. that. Yeah, you can do me that. And my wife. Me Yo, and definitely. Wife, my wife's wife. still here, too. We'll all get together and take that picture again and keep Absolutely. it up in the house. Man, you know what? I go to work, and, you know, I'm off Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So I, I go to work, man. I usually play my little bit of poker like I did today on – on Tuesday and Wednesday, I go play some poker. I'm probably the I not probably I'm the youngest person at the table. I sit there. Everybody knows who I am, so we ain't got a lot of questions about nothing, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. People from Indiana, so we get to talk about Indiana basketball. As mm-hmm. soon as I walked in today, they were all like, "Man, you know, I didn't bet on the game again." So <laughs> Rutgers, right? they, I said, "Me neither." So you know, that's what we gotta stop doing. Don't bet on them, they win. Right, that's exactly. the first thing I said when I walked in there today, man. So, that's, you know, that's it, man. I, I live here with my, my wife and my stepdaughter and my dog. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just us, man. We just uh, make it every day, day by day, man. Awesome, man. You have a fantastic experience, man. And one of my – is probably be my favorite, you know, past alum that I like talking to and having conversations with, keeping in touch with, man. And I appreciate you taking an hour. Well, I could talk to you for two hours, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing off. All right. When well, you fly out to Vegas, yeah. you come to the house, we'll all sit around, man. Me and you sit out in the backyard, watch the TV, talk, yeah. and we'll chop it up all day, man. 
Absolutely, man. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Now, signing out for the House of, House of Hoosier podcast with legend Dean Garrett, St. J. Guyton, and we're out uh, for today. Thank you, man. Hey, man, everybody, text this dude on uh, Sunday. It's his birthday. I got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know I'm going to text you. You know, I'll be back you know, on Sunday before Super Bowl, so I'll be letting you know. Happy birthday. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, brother. Bye. Thanks. All right, man. I love you, man. Love you too, man.